Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the Play Arts Kai variant Deadpool figure, which a lot of people really like, a lot of people have some issues with. Big surprise, it's Deadpool. We're going to have this kind of problem, I think, with every Deadpool figure going forward. People either love him no matter what, hate him no matter what, or they're kind of neutral and objective, which is what we're going to aim for for this review. I got to tell you, though, it's not bad. It does most things really well, so I'm pretty happy about that. So... Uh, let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about 26 and a half centimeters, which makes him pretty close to 10 and a quarter inches. So he's pretty well scaled. And I gotta say, right off the bat, I think he is easily a contender for the best of the Marvel variants. We've had a couple of good ones. Thor was pretty nice. Venom was really good. Um, you know, some of the other ones were okay, but definitely has some issues. This guy might be the most overall good figure. He definitely has a couple of, of issues, but I think, I think most of them is pretty damn good. It's, it's surprising to me. I guess they fixed what they were doing that was bugging me because most of the ones I'm picking up now are not, uh, they're not having the problems that I expected them to have. So that's a good thing. So as far as the paint goes on this guy, I love the way they mix the metallic and bright red with the darker and not metallic red, and then even the, the still kind of bright red but not metallic. So the finished composition is very nice. We have some metallics for the blacks and grays, and then we have some flatter colors for the blacks and grays. Very nice looking overall. Lots of silver studded in throughout, whether it's little tiny details on belts or things, or, or just the little fins on the hands. You can see the silver on there just really really makes the figure pop it looks great uh, very pleased with the overall aesthetic of this guy uh, i will say i don't care for the way they designed the faces mostly because the way they made that plate on the nose it does look like he has like a nose armor and it looks a little weird but that's a subjective thing for the most part so not really a big deal and i also just don't care for the options for the heads the way the uh, well we'll get to that when we talk about the eyes so yeah it's a very nicely done figure the sculpt is for the most part really clean Paints are definitely clean enough. I could definitely do without the gold dry brushing. The the wear marks on his shiny red armor, it's gold. It should definitely be silver. I think it would look way better as silver and it makes more sense, but that's not a huge deal breaker anyway, so I guess that's okay. So let's go ahead and talk about accessories. We do have three interchangeable heads. We have the head that comes on him in the package, which has one larger eye than the other, one head with both eyes really large, and then one head with both eyes very small and kind of upturned like he's smiling, I guess. There's no real good, just generic, normal-looking Deadpool head. The one with the one eye bigger than the other is okay, except the tiny eye is really small. Then the two big eyes are like the wide-open look, not just the normal eye look, so... There's not really a great normal neutral head for him, so that's a little bit disappointing, but you can get by with the, the half and half head. I think that's okay. For the hands, we have the two fist hands that come on him in the package, two thumbs up hands, two sword gripping hands, two style pose with your finger out hands, one hand for holding his throwing knife, uh, two hands for holding the guns, and then two secondary hands for holding the gun, or singular, gun singular, so one gun. So that's pretty cool. Lots of different hands. We have a knife that goes in his boot that can also go in the hand for holding the swords. So we do have the two swords, which are nicely painted, nicely sculpted. We have a throwing knife and two little throwing spikes. And then we have his gun. Now, I don't care for this gun just because uh, it's too big. It's too big. For Deadpool, you want to be able to put him in a lot of pose variety, but with a two-handed weapon like that, it's going to limit what you can do. I think it would have been much better to just give him a pistol so that you can have him holding a sword in one hand and a pistol in the other. But now, I mean, he can hold it in one hand, but it's going to limit what kind of posing you can do because it's just so big and long and awkward. It's not good for good composition for your pose, but that's a subjective thing for the most part as well. So before we move on to anything else, let's talk about the scabbards on his back because that's kind of a big deal. They are on a hinge and a swivel because it's a standard ball hinge for them. So you can move those around however you need to for the most part, within reason anyway. Uh, there is a big cavity in his back because of how it's designed. But that does allow you to give him a pose where he's reaching back and grabbing the katana very easily as you guys saw on the turnaround in the beginning. It's a nice little implementation there. So I, I like that. It's very nicely done. And if you want to, because of that, you can just swivel around like this, and there we go. You can pop it off if you want to. So it's going to leave definitely a hole in his back, but if you want to take the scabbard off his back, and as long as you don't look at the back, you can definitely do that. We're actually going to leave it off for the rest of the review so it's not in the way, but 
it's nice that that's an option. So as far as the heads go, it's a double ball peg on top of the neck. You can move them around really well. No problem posing this guy, and uh, there's no real big gaffs. The neck is also on a ball peg, though it has much more limited range. You can kind of force it over and then pose him, and that's fine, but it's going to take a little bit of work to squish it around in there with this kind of thick collar, even though it is a softer plastic. But I do like the range and the fact that there are no big gaps. This piece is soft, so you can raise the arms no problem at all. All the way out to the side. Full rotation, really no issues other than I don't care for the way it's engineered. But functionally speaking, not aesthetically speaking, it's very nice, so that's okay. You do get to rotate the arm around at the shoulder itself a little bit, but not that much. They did give you a bicep swivel, but it's just a really ugly cut joint. I don't know why they did that. I really wish they would have gone higher up and done it up there where it's more round. Doing it down here where it's ovular just makes it not look good, so that's definitely disappointing. They're ugly joints. They could definitely be better, but functionally they work just fine. You can also rotate at either end of the elbow hinge, so that's a good thing, and you do get good range out of the elbow, better than 90 degrees. A little bit of a cavity in there. It's not great, but it's definitely not the worst we've ever seen. And then for the wrists, it's not the worst we've ever seen again, because it does kind of go in flush with the hand, but you do end up with a big flush, or a big flat surface for the wrist, or for the forearm, with the ball peg sticking out. So it is disappointing in terms of the looks, but functionally speaking, you get really good range out of it. So that is okay. For the upper torso, I do believe it's the hinge ball peg combination again, which is a little weird since Marcus Phoenix, I'm pretty sure he didn't have it, but this guy does, but it works okay. You can lean the chest back really far with only a little bit of a gap. So I like that. And then leaning it forward, it's very limited. I don't know what happened with, with that. You can't lean it forward. You can clear these things with the chest. It goes right over them, but it just can't go any farther. So it's a little bit disappointing. You can't hunch over more. You do get full rotation, and you can lean from side to side pretty well, pretty effectively, all in the upper torso, so that's nice. Lower torso, it leans back, but you definitely get a big gap in the front. And then it doesn't really lean that far forward. Not so much of a gap in the back, but it, it is pretty limited. So it's weird that he can't lean forward. It leans side to side really nicely, but the way it's just kind of cut flat in order to make room for the hips does make it a little bit of an eyesore. Definitely could be better, but it's not terrible. It's easily, or it's definitely not one of the worst we've seen. His floating crotch piece is nicely done because it really hugs the figure. It doesn't even stand out too much in terms of cuts or anything, so I like it. It looks very, very good. Very pleased with that. And then in terms of the hips, you can get them out pretty much all the way. Might even be able to go one more if I adjust the torso a little bit. Yeah, it's not going to want to click. But either way, you can pretty much get them all the way out. No problem at all. So that's really good. Bringing them forward. It does get in the way a little bit, the crotch piece, because of those ammo pouches and magazines. But you still get really good range. So that's nice. The thigh does rotate around on the hip. And you get an ugly cut joint again. Another swivel. Why do they keep doing that? They need to stop. They can't even match the paints. So that's disappointing for sure. Those swivels definitely stand out. But I guess it's something you can live with. For the knees, it's not bad. They don't have too much of a cavity in there, so that's pretty good. You get good range, and it's it's not especially ugly. It works well enough, and it looks good enough, so I'm happy with that. Uh, you do get a scabbard down here for the small knife, so that's pretty cool. I guess it's technically the big knife since the small knife is the throwing knife. The foot can go pretty far forward at the ankle because it tucks in on the armor, so I really like that design. Though when you bring the foot all the way back, you have good range. You do get a bit of a cavity up there where the foot tucks in, so be aware of that. You can rotate it around and get yourself a really nice ankle rocker, so that's a good thing. No problems posing the feet. And then you do have a toe hinge, and I really like the way they did the toe hinge on this guy because it kind of collapses on itself and it works very nicely. So I am very happy about that, though it does give you a bit of a gap down here. The way it's engineered is pretty good otherwise. So yeah, it's, it's a really solid figure. It's not perfect by any means. But it's a, it's a really solid one. It has mostly good things and only a few bad things. And it's Deadpool, so I think people are going to be very happy with it. Uh, Deadpool, I mean, as far as the character goes, I, I guess he's popular because of the movies right now. I'm not so sure why everybody's such a, a Deadpool fanboy anymore. But the point is, this figure will satisfy even those of you who are not Deadpool fanboys like myself. I mean, I like the character fine, but I need a good figure, and this one is, so I'm happy with it, and I can recommend it. So, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff, so make sure you come back for that. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, and in the meantime, keep collecting.